Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is going to be at Radavadra versus Seguero, who were acting as the peanut gallery in the last game between Cube and Flipstip. It's going to be on Desert Needle, which came up actually in the last tournament. The no, not the last one. Came up I think, in the two v two. Yeah, in the two v two tournament in April, not the May one v one tournament. I think it might have come up once, but basically didn't. So one v one is not what this map is known for, but we'll see how it works out. So Seguro is starting on the southeast side of the map, or southwest side of the map, and apparently did not quite pick the right spot he wanted to be in. Hasn't decided his factory. While Radavadra going for the Cloakybot factory. We'll get back to Seguro once he's decided what he's doing. Radavadra going for Glaive, followed by Rector. So he's going, or Conjurer. So he's going to be going for just scouting into a bit more of a late game oriented strategy. While Seguro going also for Cloakybot factory, and he is going to be going heavy raiding. Wow, 11 glaze right off the bat. Seguero does not even care. He just wants to kill everything. Which is an understandable sentiment, really. I mean, playing this game, and you're killing things, as, or at least killing robots, is an integral part of the game. So, I can definitely see where Seguero is coming from. It's just building things is also important, but there's their conjurer. Yeah, generally speaking, it's like 3 to 5 glaives is your standard. I'm raiding now, opening. 11 Glaives is pretty much an all-in by 0k standards, but we'll see how it works out. If he's able to tear apart everything Radovatra has, then who cares? He'll win. Otherwise, he'll have to struggle a bit, but he should be fine. Radovatra is not being too aggressive. He's mainly just scouting out. Of course, it really comes down to a few minutes from now based on economic change or economic advantage, but it looks like Seguero is actually expanding a bit faster. He does have a lot of Glaives going out. No, rec no Conjurers right now, but he is expanding a fair bit. He is reclaiming as much as he can. And he's actually got an economic advantage. Very slight, but he does have one by two metal. And half a dozen glaives moving into Radavadra's base while Seguero has defended his own against being scouted and also has a bit of reclaim to work with. So, this is what we want to pay attention to though. Seguero's glaives running into Radavadra's base. Radavadra does have a Lotus set up, but that will not be able to fend them off. He does have a bunch more glaives coming in to try to defend, but. They are in the wrong direction. Radavadras, not aware of where this is coming from, just now realizing where the glaives are coming from on his radar. And Seguero is going to be able to get rid of this Lotus before it comes up. One second left, and it will come up. Deal a bit of damage. And Okay, that was basically no damage at all. Dealt maybe 30 damage in total in its entire lifetime. Very good timing there, Seguero, by the way. That, that was actually... I don't know if you intended to do that, but that was definitely the perfect timing on that Lotus. The Radavadras is going to have to defend with his commander. It is possible, it's going to be a bit tricky. He does have a lot of glaives to contend with. He does have a Lotus, however. Sorry. Radovad has a lot of glaives to contend with. And the commander, however, is not the focus here. Seguero trying to kill it off. It will not succeed, unfortunately, for him. Or, actually, his glaive got stuck. It oh, cannot attack. Radovad kills off, or reclaims that bush, kills off the glaive, and fends off the attack pretty successfully. At the same time, he does have five glaives of his own in Seguero's area. Not quite in his base, but very close to it. And at the same time, Radovatra has been building up. He does ha and he has Reclaim as well. He, he was building up behind that. He has Reclaim. He has a Glaive over to the southeast, looking to expand there from the looks of it. However, Seguero still has a small garrison posted, and Radovatra attacking with his own, but he is not going in quite as much for the kill. Seguero is pretty much just being scattered out here. I think Radovatra is going to try to pick off this Lotus and everything around it. And he will be able to do so. Getting that Lotus out will be a nice move. Get rid of the Metal Extractor. And he will he will be able to get rid of the Conjurer. He does spot it. And he is going for it. Making sure to target it. A couple Glaives coming in from Seguero to try to deal with this. But that Conjurer is going to go down. And if micro properly, Radovatra's Glaives will survive this. But it looks like he is not microing it properly. So it's going to be a draw. That fight had no winner. Everybody loses. Just like in regular war. Radovatra continuing to go on with Glaives. On this map... Not surprising at all. The raiding phase on larger maps tends to last quite some time just because it is difficult to get the heavier units across the map to position them properly. However, that being said, Seguero going straight for Warrior. Doesn't want to bother fighting a micro war with the Raiders. He's going to go straight for the Warrior, probably position it kind of as a defense. I mean, in a map like this, it's about at the edge between large units like Warriors and Rogue, and Rogue so much in this case, Warriors and Rockos being useful in their own right to being basically mobile turrets. And I think it's probably more on the useful in his own right stage, but this size of the map, but it's close. Anyway, Glaive coming along here gets rid of the Conjurer that was taking the southeast side of the map, so Radovatra able to stop Zagira from expanding. That garrison was there for a while, by the way. 
And Radovadra is expanding on his own, so right now Sagaro still has a slight economic advantage, but not by much. The main advantage is this giant reclaim field, which he has not taken advantage of yet. He does have another contra with the Lotus in front of the factory. But the biggest threat is going to be to his commander. His commander, a support com, with a warrior nearby. That's That warrior is going to be necessary for this, and that will actually not be a problem. Radovadra avoiding it entirely, but that's going to mean he's going to go around from the northwest side, go south and into the base directly. Sagaro looks like he is at least dimly aware of this, getting a Lotus up. He does have enough to defend this. He's not going to have any problems with this here. And we're coming from Radovadra as well. Bit surprising. Normally you'd counter warrior with Rocco, but given the size of the map, like I said before, we're going to see more ban or more glaze before we see I'm thinking Shieldbot Factor for some reason. We're going to see more glaives before we see a lot more Roccos. But it's hard to say. It looks like once again we are seeing it more as a mobile defense turret. Which for one warrior, yeah, that's kind of how it works at this stage in the game. Later on we will see more warriors and Ro and Roccos, and we won't see as many glaives, but that might not be for a while. That might not even be this game. This game might not last long enough. Usually it's about 10-15 minutes for that to even start happening in any appreciable numbers. So we're still getting a lot of glaives and nearly a dozen glaives coming in from Radovadra. Once again going to try this. He's going to have a fair number of lotuses to, to contend with. The warrior is out of position though. That should be pointed out. The warrior is way out of position. And Radovadra and Segaro meeting up. Small skirmish in the north but looks like it's going to be a draw once again. At the same time, Radovadra going to the southeast. He is going to be able to deal with some of this, but will be a, he will be able to get rid of the Lotus. Maybe a couple of metal extractors. And the radar does go down. However, losing a lot of glaives in the process. This is all reclaim, which getting rid of the Lotus is a great idea if you're trying to have a follow-up. But why? No, you don't want to go for that. You want to go... Ah, oh, Radovadra wasn't paying quite enough attention. Not able to get into the blind spot behind the factory. And not able to kill any metal extractors. Gets rid of a couple of Lotuses, but that only matters if you have a follow-up attack. Right there. He'd have to have another set of glaives right behind it, which he does not. And now Zeus is up for Sagara, which won't do a whole lot against massive glaives, but it will help against the warrior. He has his own warrior, of course, and Sagara with a couple of glaives over to the north. Looks like he might be planning for a raid of his own. Actually, a raid would be quite successful against Radovadra with no real defenses in his main base. And it looks like Sagara realizes this and goes for it, or tries to. Forgets he's not playing Spider Factory, trying to go up this hill. Not gonna happen. But if he goes around the side, he could actually deal with this. It's one Lotus defending it. One Lotus behind a Solar Collector and Max. It's well defended Lotus, but still only one Lotus. There are several blind spots in the base. There's one around here. I think there's one around here too. So there's a few blind spots he could rest his glaives in, but looks like he's not going to go for that just now. He is instead going to go off and lose all of his glaives in another draw battle against Radavadras. Actually, no, he's going to lose his glaives entirely. Zagara, unfortunately, not paying enough attention there. Loses that to Miss Micro. More Zeus is coming in as well. The Caretaker up. So Sagaro does have an economic advantage, by the way. He does have 25 metal income. Part of that is... No, none of that's reclaim, actually. None of that at the moment is reclaim. But he does have an economic advantage. Very slight. Five metal, but still something. Radovadra, on the other hand, 21 metal and no Caretaker. He is actually floating. Both players are floating, but Sagaro does have the Caretaker. Main reason Sagaro is floating is that he's not building. Not using repeat build. Yeah, he is not building anything right now, and no secondary factory either. He needs to be building more units. I'm not. I'm surprised he's not using repeat build. It looks like he's using a lot of the shifter control build to get five or ten units in at once, but he's not using the repeat build, surprisingly enough, which is something you kind of need to do. On the other hand, Radovadra is, so he's not going to be floating once he gets the caretaker up, which he surprisingly isn't. In fact, this conjurer is accidentally on weight. He needs to deal with that. But he does have Rocco's coming in. He does have a couple glazes as well. The Rocco's are going to be in here. They will be quite useful against the Zeus and the Warriors. Sagaro's army is well set up to be countered by Rocco if there were enough Rocco's. Which at present there are not. Radovadra able to pay attention to that Conjurer again. Still, he needs a Caretaker. It's huge. And Sagaro, with Reclaim, by the way, does have very nearly double the economy of Radovadra. So Sagaro, you know, very, very nice spot here. Where's he getting the Reclaim from? Oh, I see. Right, back in his pace in the Lotuses. He is pretty comfortable right now. Economy-wise, Economy, economy -wise he is. Army-wise, is actually pretty even. Surprisingly enough. And in comes Sagara with quite a few glaives. A warrior, however, will be ready to deal with him in the center of the map. Well, further to the side, we do have war. We have Glaive versus Zeus, and the Glaive's running around pretty effectively dodging around here. Looks like just fight, might fight, but still able to deal with these Zeuses to a decent degree, damaging them. About to a third of their health, actually. Or two-thirds of their health. Not bad. 
Rock was in the back to help with this, but unfortunately not being put on fight command, not able to get away from the Zeus's in time. And at the same time in the northwest, we do have the Glaives just running around this oasis, trying to avoid getting killed, but Sagaro's Glaives run into the warrior, and not quite enough of them to overwhelm the warrior. He, he does make sure to not lose them, that is the important thing. Only losing a couple Glaives to that warrior, and this is in the middle of the map, so it's not as big of a deal in terms of reclaim. It's still a bit of a problem, but not as large of one as it would have been otherwise. And Sagaro does have his nice economy set up. He does have more economy in the southwest side of the map. Radovadra is developing as well to the northeast side of the map. It looks like he's focusing a decent amount on overdrive, but at the moment, it's not helping too much. It's getting about 25% boost. Bit of a boost, but not a huge amount. The Radovadra still pushing away these Zeus's, but the Zeus's are very close to just being able to rush in and deal with Radovadra's base. However, Radovadra coming with a bunch of Glaives, which will be able to bun rush the Zeus's and likely take them out completely. Yep, there goes two of the Zeus's right away, and this last Zeus, not quite dead yet, but it will be soon. As the Glaives do retreat, but the Rockos are still there that will be able to deal with it. And this Zeus will be going down shortly. To that army of Glaives, that down it goes. So, Sagaro's attack being knocked away, and that's a lot of Zeus is being lost right outside of Radavadra's base. That's a bunch of reclaim fodder right there, which I'm sure he's going to take. I'm sure he's going to enjoy. Still, Sagaro has... Okay, now, okay, Sagaro has gone for the second caretaker. So, he's still floating. Four, okay, third caretaker, that will do the trick. That will stop us floating. Finally, Radovadra gets a caretaker of his own, and neither player once again has gone for a factory switch. Radovadra just not getting the caretaker he needs that he would have been avoiding floating up to this point if he had done. And Sagaro has enough caretakers to avoid floating entirely, pushing out Zeus's pretty quickly. 10 seconds to Zeus, that is not bad. I mean, 40 metal in, but hey, it's what it is what works. 10 seconds to Zeus is not a bad number, though admittedly. That's going to be pushing up against about 3 seconds per Glaive. Given the numbers you need for Glaives to Zeus, I think it's pretty even at this point, but... Radovadra has an incoming disadvantage, and he needs to actually get even more metal poured in this factory. Despite the fact that he is pouring 30 metal in, he is still floating pretty heavily. He could pour even more in for the moment. Not doing so, though. He does have a couple Conjurers. They are building up some stuff around the map, but... Not in... Metal. Not building any more metal spots, and not taking the reclaim field either. Radovadra setting up some units to try to defend that, but Zeus's are streaming in now. Sagaro coming in with quite a large number, really. He's got... How many Zeus's does he even have? He is... Oh boy. This is... Eight Zeus's right off the bat, and there's gonna be, like I said, six every minute. However, Radovadra is gonna try to get rid of at least a few of them. He needs to get rid of all of them, really. He needs to push through this. At this point, he is playing defense, and... Sagaro can just take all the map at this point. The Red Avengers does have a bit of a counterattack. There are Rockos coming for counterattack. They are going to be pushed away, but not before dealing at least a bit of damage, getting rid of some of the metal extractors, closing off these solar collectors for a bit. Not quite eliminating the economic disadvantage, but still helping out somewhat. However, I think Red Avenger probably should invest in a bit of a factory switch. Ravens probably would be an okay idea. A bit more economy, and then switch to Ravens, bomb out all these, bomb out the main base, maybe bomb out the commander too to prevent more reclaim, or to reduce the amount of reclaim that happens, but yeah, I don't think he's going to be doing too well with ground factory at this point. He does have a lot of glaives that is going to help in large numbers, the glaives advantage against the Zeus doesn't really work anymore. Rockos still do though, but not enough Rockos are being built. Building a bunch of ticks that will help, but even then it's going to be tricky. Yes, he set them up in advance. They have to be set up as landmines, that is huge. Set them up as landmines, have the Zeus's walk over them. If the Zeus's can spot them, they're going to die. Actually, that one's going to go off. Is it going to go off right in the middle of the Glaives? No, it's not. But it does go off before the Zeus's get too close. However, the second one will go off in the middle of the Zeus's. And that, unfortunately, one, gla one tick is not enough to deal with all these Zeus's. However, a second tick, not able to deal with all the Zeus's. Not able to get all of them at once. Able to deal with a few... Okay, there we go. Gets... No, not quite near enough. The Zeus's had just bunched up, but wasn't enough. If he's able to do that, he'll be able to get rid of all the Zeus's, and that'd be huge. I mean, the amount of reclaim that would come in from that, that's 350 metal builds, so it's probably... That's somewhere around 100 metal reclaim. And... The, oh, stuns one of them for 10 seconds. That's gonna help a bit, but not a whole lot. He needs to stun up even more. That one's gonna go down, though. And more of them going down, another set of glaives coming in, getting rid of more Zeus's. And... Still, that tick would've been wonderful to have. An additional tick, but that is not here. No more ticks are forthcoming, actually, and even then, the Zeus's are still going down slowly but surely, but a lot of Glaives being lost in the process, and not enough Zeus's going down at the same time. 
Another couple dozen glaives coming to follow up, and I think this is going to be game. I think Radavadra has no way out of this. His commander is about to go down. His factory is at half health and steadily dropping. Zeus has no way of being destroyed, and more ticks trying to come in to deal with this, but it doesn't matter. The factory's down. The commander is about to go down. One more shot, one or two more shots from the Zeus, but it doesn't even matter. Radavadra surrenders, and that is game. So, I guess Seguro's big rush at the start actually did not work out against him. Didn't work out for him, actually. Kept Radavadra building a lot of defense. Well, actually, no. Seguro built more defenses. So, yeah, Radavadra didn't build a whole lot of defenses. I guess Radavadra just didn't get enough economy. Maybe got a bit too concerned with the fact that he was raided off early on. Didn't try to get the front area. Didn't try to get the northwest. Didn't really try to expand too much. So, ultimately, just losing to unit count. And I think a fact switch would probably have helped there. However, that is that game. So we're going to have another game for you guys in just a moment. It is going to be between Exist and One Cut. I'm not sure exactly who One Cut is, but Exist is a pretty decent player. So we'll see if how One Cut does. It'll be on Zion. So stay tuned for that. I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 